my name is Dr. Francis Sridhar Katumala. I am a consultant urologist working at uh, Kim's Hospital, Second Raval. Now, I will be talking about prostate related problems in elderly uh, people. Now, prostate as such, it is a gland which is seen in all male population. It is, it is, uh, uh, it has different problems at different age groups like in small children and young boys, you can have some congenital problems which are like um, starting during the uh, congenital problems is like from the birth. And now in young age groups or reproductive age group, you have problems like prostatitis that is inflammation of prostate and infection, infection of the prostate where uh, the symptoms are like you will have burning micturition, you will have pain in the perineum or in the testicles lower abdomen, you will have pain at the tip of the penis, you will have problem in uh, voiding and all these stuffs. These are for prostatitis. Now, what I am talking about is uh, prostate related problems in elderly age group. Now, elderly age group you have two main problems which are uh, which can happen. One is benign prostatic hyperplasia and the second one is carcinoma prostate. Now, these are the two main things which happen in elderly uh, age group. Now, now why do why do these things happen? It is according to the age as the age increases the prostate size the gland increases and the alpha receptors which are present near the bladder neck and along the prostatic area they sort of get excited and they overact and uh, they cause these symptoms. Gland size as such is not directly related to the symptoms, but these alpha receptors are the main problematic problem creators and cause all these symptoms. Now, what symptoms do you have when you have prostate uh, uh, related problems? You will have urinary tract infection, you will have urinary tract symptoms like you will have increased frequency, you will have to go and pass urine again and again and you will have nocturia that is normally in the night when you sleep once you do not have to get up in the night to pass urine again. But nocturia is basically you get up so many times in the night to pass urine, you will not have a good sleep and the next day the entire day will be uh, disturbed. So, you will have increased frequency, you will have nocturia, you will have hesitancy. Hesitancy is basically you will not be able to start your uh, micturation properly you will have poor flow, you stand in void, you will not be able to generate a good flow, it will fall near your feet. Then uh, incomplete evacuation, that is basically even after you void, you will have a feeling of uh, incomplete evacuation, that is you have not voided to completion. Then you will have recurrent urinary tract infections and uh, these are the most commonly seen uh, problems related with uh, prosthetic hyperplasia, benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Now, what do you do with this? What do you do when these symptoms come? Basically, you will have to go to a urologist, the urologist will examine your prostate, he will do a digital rectal examination that is basically you will uh, per rectal examination you will have to do to assess the prostate. How is the feel of the gland? What is the size of the gland? Is there any nodularity or is it hard or is it soft? Because basically if it is hard and nodular, it goes towards malignancy. If it is firm to soft and it is smooth, it goes towards a benign, benign is basically non-cancerous enlargement of the prostate. Now, once your digital rectal examination is done, then you will undergo some uh, urinary urine tests, some blood tests, some ultrasound examinations of the prostate to generally assess how, how bad the symptoms are and basically in the urine it is going to tell you whether is there any infection or is there any pus cells in the urine. There is a blood test called as prostate specific antigen, which is very controversial test, which usually they do not do it on a regular basis unless and until the patient is well educated, the patient wants to get it done, the patient is well explained about the, about the pros and cons of that prostate specific antigen. We will not talk about prostate specific antigen as such right now, but yes, that is one of the tests which can be done for prostatic evaluation. Another, another thing is ultrasound examination ultrasound examination to assess the size of the prostate to see if there are any um, complications which have developed because of the prostate like you will have any residual urine, high residual urine that is after you void again they do a scan to assess whether there is any urine left behind or not or if the prostate is so enlarged and the kidneys are already getting affected and all that stuff. So, these are the things which you, which you investigate to assess the prostatic problem. Another test which we do is something called as uroflometry. Uroflometry is basically a funnel shaped machine where you sort of pass urine into that machine which will give you the amount of urine which you voided 
with the pressure with the with the uh, flow rate flow rate is basically with how much speed you voided all these things that euro flow meter will, will give you now once these tests are done and along with your digital rectal examination then uh, along with your symptoms you basically we assess you and we label you as whether your symptoms are mild moderate and severe and all that stuff depending on that you take a call whether how to treat this benign prostatic hyperplasia now benign prostatic hyperplasia in elderly days it it's always used to be surgery now we have medications for benign hyperplasia benign prostatic hyperplasia medications like alpha blockers i was talking about alpha receptors these are the medicines which block those alpha receptors and your symptoms improve like tamsulosin alfizosin psilocybin these are the drugs which are given to block the alpha receptors and uh, there's another group of drugs which are called as 5 alpha reductase inhibitors which <coughs> sort of act on the hormones conversion of this testosterone to 5 uh, dihydrotestosterone this conversion is stopped and where the size of the gland it appears to be reduced so these are the two drugs which are basically given to control the prostatic symptoms now if the medications fail that means if your symptoms are persisting on medications or if you already come to the doctor with complications of prostate like you've already formed stones because of prostate or you've already developed recurrent urinary tract infections or recurrent hematuria hematuria is basically blood in urine or you are you your kidneys have sort of uh, getting blocked because of this enlarged prostate and your creatinine your renal function tests are not normal so these are the indications where you will want to operate on a prostate for benign prostatic hyperplasia now what surgeries do you do you will have transurethral prostatic surgeries that's basically the most the gold standard which everybody talk about is turp that is t u r p transurethral resection of prostate through the urinary passage through the urethra you put a scope you see the prostatic gland how big it is whether how uh, like it's blocking that entire urethra so you sort of take it off chip by chip and you you create a you take off the entire the prostate the adenoma the gland which is blocking the urethra you resect the prostate till the capsule and then that the passage is open the alpha receptors are gone so you are basically you will void to completion you your urinary symptoms improve one of the method is turp transurethral resection of the prostate and these days everybody is talking about lasers with lasers also you can you can handle that prostate and you resect the prostate and enucleate the prostate and uh, take off this thing now these are the surgeries which medications and surgeries which you do for your prostatic problem now yes there are few complications like post operatively also like there are some uh, you can have hematuria you can have infection few people will develop incontinence of urine these are the complications which you can uh, develop because of surgeries so we talked about benign prostatic hyperplasia now the another entity which you see see in elderly age group is carcinoma prostate in the digital rectal examination which i was talking about the prostate will be hard nodular that is one of the features of carcinoma prostate another thing is psa will be very high psa can be high in benign prostatic hyperplasia psa can be high in prostatic abscesses psa can be high in prostatitis there are so many reasons where psa can be high so just by psa that's why i was talking about psa being controversial so just by high psa you can't label anybody as carcinoma prostate so basically clinical examination talking to the patient assessing the patient and uh, with the psa all these things will give you a idea whether it is carcinoma or not but the the investigation which will say that this is carcinoma is basically a prostatic biopsy prostatic biopsy will sort of tell you that most common cancer which is seen in prostate is adenocarcinoma prostate adenocarcinoma prostate can be seen even in patients with normal psa also so basically biopsy is the one which gives you a 100% diagnosis of carcinoma prostate now carcinoma prostate once you diagnose through the biopsy then you will have to stage the disease staging the disease is basically you will want to know whether the disease is localized within the prostate or it is gone out of the capsule that is locally advanced or it is metastatic metastatic is basically most of these carcinoma prostate spread to the bones and other organs so is it metastatic or not or it is hormone refractory hormone refractory is like after treatment also the the carcinoma prostate starts spreading or the psa starts raising so these are the four stages of uh, carcinoma prostate now depending on what 
stage of the disease you are, then you are, your doctor will plan, for, plan a treatment for you. Now, what are the different treatment options? One is radical prostatectomy. Radical prostatectomy is basically when you have CA prostate, carcinoma prostate which is localized to the prostate where uh, the entire prostate with seminal vesicles and with lymph nodes that entire thing is removed surgically. That is basically radical prostatectomy. Radical prostatectomy can be done by open technique or these days it is laparoscopic and robotic uh, radical prostatectomies are done. So, that is basically one is radical prostatectomy. The other options are radiotherapy and uh, once the disease is spread then we talk about hormonal therapy. Hormonal therapy is basically we have medical uh, castration and uh, surgical castration. Basically the hormone testosterone and dihydrotestosterone these have to be blocked, these have this supply has to be blocked, this should not reach the prostate and it is formed in the testis. So, basically testicles have to be removed by either surgical uh, castration that is basically orchidectomy or medical castration also can be done where you give some injections and where these hormones can be controlled and the PSA uh, will sorry the prostatic cancer will not grow. So, depending on the stage of the disease you will have so many treatment options. So, basically elderly people will have urinary symptoms which need to be assessed by a urologist and then decide whether it is a benign uh, prostatic hyperplasia or it is a carcinoma prostate and then we take it from there whether what investigations do you need and what treatment do you uh, require. Now, this is basically a small information which I am giving you on prostate related problems in elderly people and uh, yeah depending on on uh, what your doctor assesses, what your doctor decides, what, what comes out as a diagnosis, then we can plan for a treatment. This is for the information of all the patients who are suffering with urinary tract symptoms and who need to visit a urologist. Thank you.